Hello comrades, this is the uh, Russian Comrade Alliance in Soviet Russia game publisher cares about you. Uh, I would like you to uh, welcome me. I am uh, in Cyberspace Individual Ginzaki. Uh, these are my uh, hosts, co-hosts, the Born Identity and Snoop Eddie Ed. <laughs> so oh, bored. And welcome to a gaming booth to Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> just, uh, just, no. I love it. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> E3 has come and gone, and there was a lot of things said, and yet I still win my bet that it was going to suck. Because it did suck. Just like that accent. Russians everywhere are offended. Uh, or laughing. Probably both. I hope both laughing. Both. I really hope laughing. Because, I mean, hey, it gets people watching more. Because, you know, <laughs> shit like this will come up more. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, starting off the um, festivities at uh, E3 was the... You got the you know, the first of the big conferences, the X-Bone conference. Um, they showed some games most of which were not exclusive, so it was really just farting in the wind, but you know how it is. Um, we got to see a bit more of their hand. They didn't really say anything. I win. Um, but we do now have the, um, the limitations in that uh, the X-Bone will only work in 21 countries uh, throughout the world, and anyone who's taken geography knows there are a lot of countries in the world and um, it's like half of Europe, it, no, more than half, 17 out of 27 countries in Europe have been um, excluded from this. And these aren't just small countries with a few people, with a few farmers in them. These are large countries with good amounts of gamers in them. Um, Singapore wasn't included. Uh, Poland, uh, part of that European Union thing, which I found hilarious because... Um, was it? The Witcher 3 is being made in Poland, and The Witcher 3 was shown at the um, X-Bone um, conference. The only problem is the Polish people will not actually be able to play The Witcher 3 on the X-Bone. Good one. Um, Which... Ultimately, and as I've mentioned um, outside of the show, I believe... This is going to be the biggest hurdle towards um, Microsoft's success as far as being the dominant player in this generation is they just, by making it always online and by limiting which countries this thing can be coming, because it's region locked to individual countries now. So they are going to have to do really well in the countries they actually release in, or Sony just is their PS4 is going to be available to everyone, everyone's going to have them. And in these countries, there's not really going to be a choice. It's going to be Sony if you want your hardcore games, Wii U if you want um, whatever Wii U has to offer. At the moment, it's Zombie U and party games and shovelware. Now, here's the thing. Did they say, quote, always online? Or was it just, you know, that 24-hour check-in business? Well, that's what I mean. It's the same thing, essentially. We don't. Here's the problem. Also, we don't know when that check-in is going to be. Does it? Is it just a, when you say Xbox on, it goes for the check, or is there going to be a specific time in the day that it does that? I'm assuming they're going to go with the smart option, but there's always the availability for stupidity. There's always that little mini benefactor of stupidity. Of yep. He made a boneheaded decision on making it at this time. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling after E3 and after other things that were discussed at E3 and whatnot that a lot of the policies that Microsoft has outside of like where the actual service is going to initially be available and whatnot, they're going to backpedal on some of them. A lot of people in the media or what and whatnot are talking about the fact that they really see 
the potential for Microsoft to backpedal a little bit on certain things. I actually kind of think they have to yeah. because uh, this was kind of a PR suicide through this um, weekend because obviously they they still have their core fan base. And there's going to be people who are going to buy the Xbox no matter what. And so long as it has exclusives people want to play, like Halo, then it's going to sell. The only problem is they have really irked a lot of people. Like, here's a big one, a big group of people they irritated. And they they actually essentially insulted these people on stage. And that is um, army and just military troops, people who are overseas. Uh, in these countries where they won't be able to play and they play a lot of video games and yeah. they were essentially given the middle finger saying oh if you want to play video games go buy a 360 because uh, was it Don Matrick brought up the uh, getting a letter from someone on a nuclear sub and he's like I don't know people on nuclear subs but if you don't have an internet connection your experience is not going to be optimal really guy? Which, is that you, where you want to go? Which, barring the whole, this, the negative PR side of things, them at least showcasing games on their system. So oh, you actually brought up something I want to do, um, uh, games. I wanted to uh, point this out uh, with the showcase, what they showed. And I saw a lot of people go crazy over the graphics they were seeing on display in these things. I want to point out something. This is not an industry secret. It's just a lot of people don't know about it. When you see something and it looks absolutely beautiful, it's not being rendered on the console they're selling. It's being rendered on a uh, computer that probably costs twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Most of it was CGI cutscenes and stuff like that. That too, and, but yeah, you yeah. got something like I think the most beautiful one was the um, it looked at least like gameplay footage from the uh, new Metal Gear Solid game. And that had to be. Either it was uh, CGI to make it look like gameplay footage, or it was rendered on a computer. Well, the, only, the only way to be able to find out is if we had the other guy who was going to join us, because I know he was able to get his hands on it. But, me. Nee. We'll hey, find, Waldo. We'll find out more about that when he writes his article stuff yeah i'd like but, to hear them but as far as like we're, since we're starting off with microsoft they at least came out they showed games games and really nothing but games a lot of stuff new i mean yeah sure you really drew in the big fans with halo because you know seeing master chief get his get that little turban thing blown off his head just kind of sort of sent see that uh, was the worst part of the conference for me that, I thought that was I thought that was new IP they were showing. I got really excited, and when it was revealed to be Master Chief, it just all came crashing down. The one thing I can't say though that looked really impressive to me is Titanfall. I mean, being able to go from running on the ground to being able to jump into a mech to be able to jump back onto the ground. Granted, mm. it's a first-person shooter. It's still just like it's a breath of fresh air. Finally. Yeah, it shows that they're um, trying to uh, do something new, innovative. Um, obviously, we've seen mech combat games before, but um, not like this. The mechs are normally giant, not like two. Like, I'm not even sure whether to call those mechs. Those are more like mobile suits. But when I say that, yeah. I think Gundam, and those are even larger than your typical mech. Yeah, but there was also, you know, something new to be being brought to the table with uh, Project Spark. Which, Which we've learned is free to play. Yeah, and it being not only free to play, but also being very. I want to. It's like Minecraft had a high definition baby, in a <laughs> sense. So it's just like. <laughs> there you go. Minecraft. I'm now thinking of a pregnant baby. Minecraft. Ah, crap. Now I'm thinking of pregnant Notch. Get that thought out of head. Out of head. Bad. Bad. <laughs> Damn you, Eddie. Yeah, I screwed it up. Do, 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 I screwed it up. Do, do, do. And the games they showed were very interesting. The problems being that um, some of the, the what I found to be the more interesting ones were uh, cross-platform, if just with PC. Um, though there was um, the one I really thought was interesting, and that was, um, what was it? Something Overdrive? So, I don't have my thing. 
Uh, it was the really colorful shooter one, the one with all the blue or blue and orange contrast. And because I can actually use that, because it looked like it was a zombie shooter multiplayer game type of thing. Um, the I say Halo was the most disappointing, and I'm it, I it's tied with this, and that was Dead Rising. Dead seeing Dead Rising like that was horrendously disappointing it's like everything i loved about dead rising was not on display in that trailer and they even touted a feature that can only be utilized by someone with three arms so i don't even know what they're thinking there yet this other game um sunset overdrive i think it's called or i don't it's i think it's evil of sunset overdrive yeah something like that because i remember seeing that name um that that was what I was looking for. It, that might just be the spiritual successor to um, the Dead Rising series that I was looking for, because it looked fun, it looked interesting. Obviously, we, we only really saw cutscenes, we didn't see any gameplay. I'd like to know if they had any gameplay on the floor. I'm um, pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure if you like check Rev 3. I'm... Yeah, because that looked really nice. Um, and that's the, that was the highlight of the entire Microsoft thing. I thought most of it was bleh. And then that happened. I was like, okay, that that saved it for me. Um, and the PS4's um, thing had the, pretty much the same issue. Is a lot of the games they showed were uh, cross-platform, um, and they didn't really have anything that really hooked. But at the same time, it was not bad either. It was definitely better than last year, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, now, the things um, I'm interested in with the PS4 is the need for PlayStation Plus. Because in the um, past, PlayStation Plus was just an added value onto your PlayStation device that they give you uh, free games every um, month to keep you happy. You give them money. Now they're going to charge $5 a month for PlayStation Plus. And it makes me won um, mm -mm, mm -mm. wonder. Hmm? It's still the $49.95 for the PlayStation Plus. I believe for like that's for a year. Okay. If you buy it as, as, on a monthly basis, it's five dollars a month. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we had that perfectly cleared up. Oh yeah. Well, you, you can always assume that you can bundle up um, yearly prices for a discount. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm wondering if mandating that because I understand why they're doing it. They need to uh, take uh, make a bit of profit um, to lessen the blow of running a lot of their multiplayer servers. But I wonder if they're going to remove the added value portion of it, because the, essentially the plus part where you get free games, or and this is where I actually think they're going, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't not like this, and that is uh, the free games instead of like free PS4 games, you get free Gaikai games, uh, Gaikai being their um, service for streaming things. Mm -hmm. And if they did that, I would really like that. That'd be nice. Um, I, they haven't really announced anything on it. Uh, we just know that uh, the thing. And the other thing I'm really nice, or I'm really, really glad for, is that the free-to-play games, your Warframe, your Planet Side 2, are not going to require PlayStation Plus, presumably because the companies that make those games are going to be handling the servers. And the fact that with, with uh, Sony doing their thing, opening the doors, because when they were doing the press conference with them, they showed off a ton, I would say at least 20 to 30, if not more, indie games that mm -hmm. are going to be coming to that console, and with indie games... That's a, the problem I feel with both Microsoft and Sony, though, with indie games, was I felt like they were all token, they did not... Um focus enough on them like i saw some interesting talent but they didn't really elaborate it was yeah. just they wanted to say hey we still got microsoft wanted to say hey we still have indie titles and sony was trying to flaunt their uh, variety well the reason why is because you know with, with sony it's going to be everything for them to be able to like update and everything else like that it's going to be free to do that with microsoft you still have to ha the developers have to still pay and shell out money out of pocket to be able to like update or well yeah, they have to do that on both that. consoles um, not have to pay to update on the sony because sony came out and said that they will not have to pay to update their console. oh they had to do it last generation so that, that's actually they're, very nice because yeah. paying for updates is bs yeah they're saying that no you with, with ps4 you do not have to pay to update though i'm going to say one thing um about sony here is what i've noticed is they seem to be very 
I'm going to call them evil Bond villain, very cold, very calculating. They're watching the missteps Microsoft takes, and they're just adjusting their strategy. It's um, fine, and at the same time, it, everyone I'm pretty sure saw the video where they were like, here's how you share games on the PS4. Hands game, thank you. They come out and they put that out, and then they say, you know, there's going to be no... Uh, problem with used games on their system and then you see Jack Trenton get up on stage with Jeff Keighley and he says yeah first party games yeah you're not gonna have a problem with that but third party developers still have that option there. but then they backpedaled on that very soon after it's like there was a negative reaction to it and they immediately said okay maybe not it's like they're um, they're being very careful not to alienate anyone which is an interesting uh, not against Microsoft, who is seems like they're trying to alienate as many people as possible. And my thing with how PlayStation presented themselves is that Jack Trenton came up as basically, hi, I'm fucking rich and you're going to listen to me because you're waiting to hear what I'm going to say to counter Microsoft, but ha 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 ha, I'm just going to make loads of money off you. That's the attitude and the look on his face, because I actually watched the PlayStation mm -hmm. stuff. And Here it was I'm. just like, I'm like, I just, no, just no. Just, I'm like, just get him off the stage and put the actual developers and the people that we want to see on the stage. The other thing is, is um, and I noticed this from a lot of fanboys as I was watching the chat when it was announced um, in various areas, both on Twitter and on the chat involved on the stream that I was watching, when they announced that you would pay, you had half the people going, what, this is freaking ridiculous, and like flipping out. And then you had the other half going, oh, but their servers are gonna be so amazing and wonderful and it's gonna be so much better than Microsoft. Okay, you don't know that. I'm putting that out there right now. I'm gonna play devil's advocate here in kind of advocating for us consumers that are paying for this shit. It is not proven yet that our $5 a month for that, if you're paying monthly or the $50 a year in order to use online gaming on the PS4, is actually going to improve the servers at all. Yeah, we, we don't can... know that, but all the fanboys are jumping on the bandwagon doing that. And I will admit that I am a huge Microsoft supporter, but I see what's wrong with their system, and I'll even admit it. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to buy it. I will openly admit that I've already pre-ordered an Xbox One. The main reason being is that I want to live stream my Xbox games, but the setup that I would have to do because of my computer and how stuff is set up for me personally, because I don't have a separate computer screen for my computer and something to put my Xbox on, they use the same screen, I'd have to buy a second monitor and a bunch of other cables and shit. I'm just like... I want that built-in DVR mm -hmm. for the Xbox. Well, there's also the useful thing we've been hearing from professional streamers uh, that, um, uh, from an interview, is that you won't. They have made it very hard to do streaming through your PC now. They really want you to use the built-in streaming functionality, which I can understand they want to push the streaming functionality. But the problem I have, if this is true, is that it is not going to be the best um, so or hardware available to do this because these people already have computers built solely around the idea of streaming off their consoles and now you're going to make it difficult for them and ultimately you're just going to affect the um, thing uh, the con or the quality of their content and Very I feel true. that is the can of worms that both Microsoft and Sony opened, and I don't think they really care because ultimately this is going to be a very minor backlash, but it does exist that if this is true, they're just made an entire industry of people's lives harder. Yeah, and it's the thing with streaming. Um, I know a lot of, like, I'm an avid person that lives on Twitch TV. If I don't have a stream running, it's usually because I'm actually in a stream like playing with friends and whatnot or I'm at work so um, but it's the thing that like I'm on Twitch TV constantly and I love 
streamers and how much dedication they put into these things. And yes, the Xbox One does make it easier in a way, but I guess only time It makes it easier for startup. Um, yeah, for streamers, startup. Like casual yeah, it, streamers, but it makes exactly. it much harder on the For the professional, professional. side. Yeah. And I completely agree with that because it's going to make it harder for them because because you have that ease of use with the Xbox One. The moment it releases, including myself, there may be a flood of people now that are streaming and it's going to be a lot more competition for the professional streamers. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to stick with my tried and true favorites, which is what I'm going to do. But yeah, I'll check out new people if I see something. If someone says, oh, this stream's amazing and they're using their Xbox with it. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I'll go check it out. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to live on streaming on my Xbox. Like, I intend to be streaming more PC games than Xbox games. But, like, when, for example, like, if they come out with another Halo or they come out with another, when the other next Assassin's Creed comes out or I'm getting Dead Rising 3 with my one. Like, I may want to stream those, like, just, you know, dicking around with them and be like, hey, I'll just stream it because I can. Sure. Why not? <laughs> but I'm just, I'm concerned for the professional side of it because I do have friends that professionally stream. I have friends that I've subscribed to on Twitch from the day that they got their subscription button because we're close and because we're really a tight-knit group of people and I've had discussions with them and they're concerned that what's going to happen to us when all of these new streamers because of the PS4 and the Xbox One having st built-in streaming capability type things how are they going to be able to cope with that well here's the thing ultimately I think um, more competition is good because it drives up the quality um, of the product and that's ultimately what streaming is streaming is a product Mm -hmm. um, they should, if they are good at their jobs and they are a personality that is worth watching, they shouldn't really have to worry. They're going to have to obviously try to up the quality of their work, and it's going to be harder with because uh, we don't know how to what ability you're going to be able to edit the stuff that you export off of your Xbox or your Sony, uh, your PlayStation for that matter. But I, I don't think it'll be a huge problem. I think the um, overall competition will help in the long run because uh, it, it will allow some people who have some talent but not money to uh, get the equipment the exposure they need and that those new people entering the market will rise up the thing and now this I'm going to open a can of worms um, because I, I didn't like hearing this mainly on the day of I, it took me a while I've been just crossing through both the um, Xbox and the um, Sony and it's the quote who won E3 which ultimately I'm going to say who I think won E3 and this means nothing it's just a thing it's who had the better performance overall um, and on the game front it doesn't really matter games are an entirely subjective thing I personally think um, the Microsoft conference had better games um, shown um, not as many, but nice quality shown other than my uh, problems with Dead Rising and Halo. But I think the, and I note I'm coming in with a heavy Xbox bias here, the uh, 360 was the first console I ever bought by myself. And I have loved it. it. I feel that it thoroughly trounced the PS4 in the last generation just in number of consoles sold and games sold. Because, and I'll give it to the P uh, PlayStation. The PlayStation has just recently surpassed, the PS3 has surpassed the 360 in number of units sold. So uh, if you're going just on units sold, then the uh, PS3 just took the lead. But note how long the 360 held its lead. Um, Between so that's my. Yes. But I mean, it's like we're going overall, I would say. I Think well, the Wii on console sales, but again, we've had this conversation many times in the I past. Know. I'd say fifty, at least fifty percent of all Wii sold, the people didn't buy more than one or two games for them, if any games at all. It's got a decent library, at least. I had to give it that. Yeah, the uh, the decent, yes. Um, if and you're looking for fam more family friendly games, the hardcore stuff is not there. Yeah, the hardcore goes, of course, to you know. Yeah, and. But so I'm I'm trying to be as um, not I'm trying I'm trying to be as objective as possible. 
So and I uh, coming in with even a heavy bias towards Microsoft. I still think the PlayStation won overall because it do it doesn't have the pitfalls and overall it's just a better piece of hardware. Um, their conference didn't have the games, but they also did not have the Mire of Tedium. Um, now, like I said, I believe uh, PlayStation won. However, that means nothing. The it's when the games release when the is when we really start to judge who is taking the lead. Personally, I feel no like all three of them when they came in, none of them. As far Nintendo as didn't have a conference. They're not. I'm not talking about them at all. I'm going with because they showed what they showed. None of them won as. Who actually, who quote unquote won E3? It was the actual consumers, people who are going to be able to go out and just be able to buy their games. And, you know, whoever's got that little niche. Well, here's the thing I actually disagree. I think the consumers kind of ultimately lost. Um, because while we saw a few interesting games, I actually felt the majority of the games shown were kind of weak. Um, and you got the um, uh, not very consumer things coming out of the Microsoft camp. You. We don't know what the launch titles are going to be on the PlayStation, so we don't know if it's going to be worth its purchase. And the Wii U, we saw some interesting titles, but at the same time, the most interesting title we saw was... Um, now, I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm going to, uh, It's Pokemon for the uh, 3DS, but I'm going to say this. I like Smash Brothers. It is a really great game. It has never been a console seller for me, though, because it only... It's a party game. I bring it out when there are people over, and a party game cannot sell a console for me. So while it is great, it I will get it when I get a Wii U, but I will not get a Wii U for it. And that's you for other people, though. There. Well, yeah, because there's obviously your professional, or, well, I'm professional um, Smash Brothers enthusiast. I actually know um, a guy from campus when I was at college who that was the only game he played. He only played it. it. To be fair, he was really good. Yeah. But so I mean, you know, get... like I said, there, there's people who are going to enjoy the Mario Kart, the Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Frost, the Super Mario, the, Super Mario, the new Super Mario World 3D World thingy, the freaking Bayonetta, the X, the Wonderful 101, Pikmin 3. They're, they're all going to enjoy that. Including, you know, some of the other stuff that'll be coming out. That's the, third That's the thing. I only thought Bayonetta was the console seller there, or was a console seller there. So it seemed like the most hardcore title they had. Hardcore in a sense of a hardcore mindset. Yes. That's about it. Yeah, ultimately, and... as I've always said, I felt that E3 was useless. Um, so I don't really... I think this... I wanted to talk about it here so we can leave it behind because I don't feel it deserves any lip service. Um, so I'm going to... I've heard other people talk about this and it's something that needs to be said. Now, um, Marky, I understand you um, said you pre-ordered an Xbox One. and Until we learn what the um, uh, release titles are on these games, I wouldn't pre-order um, any of the consoles. Um, just because at the moment... It, they are expensive, and you are putting your money down sight unseen. Uh, and note, when you buy them up front, that is the most expensive they're ever going to be. Um, you sh and also, you're not going to be able to trade in your consoles this time around to um, harsh, or to uh, l rather deaden the blow of the cost. Like before, you could trade in your Xbox to buy your 360, and they normally give you or something. They'll, and they'll probably give you. Um, uh, I'd actually see uh, GameStop giving you a bigger uh, discount this time forward just because they would want to be getting in 360s uh, given the news we've gotten. But you're not, uh, if you've got a lot of 360 games, you're not going to be trading in for your 360 for um, a one. Can we so, mention this real quick right here since you, you brought it up to 360 and being able to change it for a one and shit like that? What kind of sort of grabs me and makes me want to slap Microsoft a good one is the fact that they decided to mold their new... They decided to bring out a new Xbox console, or an Xbox 360 console, molded in their Xbox One kind of shape. How big of a fucked up faux pas are you going to have when, you know, at Christmas time... I, I would like to believe that people aren't that stupid, um, honestly. Yeah. 
People are not that stupid, Eddie. Move yeah, on. I'm. It's too small. People already know that the Xbox One is a brick. The new 360 is a tiny piece of shit. Um, and I'm not saying piece of shit quality wise. I'm just picking on it. Um, now they want it to look like the Xbox One because they want to go for the sleek thing. And um, the, the, here's the funny thing: is we finally got to see what the PS4 looked like, and it looked like a PS1 or an, uh, an Xbox One on a slant. Yeah. It's like they are very similar looking machines. but also, And that's the thing, um, same with the PS4, is you won't be able to trade in your PS3 with it because while it technically has backwards compatibility, it's all through the Gaikai service. So it really doesn't have backwards compatibility. Yeah. But as for the launch titles thing, I can tell you they handed me a list of titles that should be available at launch. They said the guaranteed ones, though were Dead Rising 3, Blech. Battlefield 4, hmm. and Rise. Um, so, yeah, no. Um, I And I had a hard time choosing because I want all three of them. But I went with Dead Rising because I loved the other two Dead Rising games. And so I figured I'd go with the tried and true. I knew I would most likely like it. And the thought of an open world zombie game was awesome. <laughs> I'll have to... Um, uh, until I, I'd probably try it at a friend's house because just based on what I saw of that game in video, it looked just like, as I said, it did not look like a Dead Rising game. So I'm iffy on it, but yeah, I don't think those are big. And Rise, I'm just going to point this out. It looks like a Heavy Rain style gladiator game. Just so many, um, I wouldn't even call them quick time events. They're slow time events. Uh, now, I, as I said before, um, I've said in the uh, staff chat, I think, um, or at least I hope, I don't think, that that was just for showing off the game at E3. I hope that those it doesn't actually play like that. It plays a lot more gladiatorial and viscerally. Actually, when I did talk to Waldo when he was on the floor, he said it, it I'm going to probably eat my words on this one. It did play a little bit like that. It, yeah, it did have the QTEs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for him, it's okay because, you know, he doesn't mind the execution style things like that. Yeah, I prefer um, not having the control of the game taken away from me. It was one of the things that, um, I won't say killed Deus Ex Human Revolutions for me, but it really deadened the experience was whenever you went to t uh, do a takedown on someone, it would go into like a mini cutscene. So those things um, jerk me out of the gameplay a bit, but um, yeah, I don't think um, yeah. Based on that, I would say though I, I don't think any of those games are worth dropping 500 right off the bat on your um, Xbox. I'd like to see the um, uh, release titles on a PS4, but I'm going to say don't pre-order it either. Just wait for these things to get a price drop because I they probably will. Um, at least the Xbox, I figure. But, yeah, and even the Wii U, um, unless you really, really need your Smash Brothers fix, I would say don't even buy it yet. Just wait for the generation to get uh, going. And it, I, I know the um, developers don't want to hear that because they need people playing their games to make money, but as a consumer decision, you have to not waste your money so that you can spend it smartly in the future. That's my uh, spiel on that. Uh, anything else you want, guys want to add? Other than, you know, finally getting the announcement of, like, other games, things like Final Fantasy vs. 13 being actually changed to Final Fantasy 15, finally getting Kingdom Hearts, seeing um, a few other games, like, one big game that made me WTF majorly was uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, which <laughs> I'm going to see a little bit more on that because it looks, it looks kind of fun. Just like that kind of just, you throw it in the console a few times, you get it with a group of buddies, and you have a good freaking time with it. That's what I would like to see more of, is just games that would, the entire thought is, this is designed around having a good time. Um, I know one of the games that's going to be forced on me is the uh, Tom Clancy's The Division. Which I actually had to look into this one, by the way, because I'd wondered, how much does Tom Clancy have to do with the games related to him anymore, anyway? Are they still based on books? I was wondering that. And I Google it, and they acquired his, or they bought his name off of him a while ago, so they just stamp his name on the games now. So he has nothing to do with them anymore. 
and another game that I'm really kind of looking at because from where I saw like a sh short little snippet of it from uh, Rev3, I'm looking at Murdered Soul Suspect. <laughs> that game looks pretty interesting. So there, there, there's like a lot of games out there where I'm just going, hmm, interest me. And then there's a lot of games where I'm just going, okay, I will sit and wait on them. Yep. Just as a consumer kind of thing. Yeah. I'd like to see, um, now, th this might have actually been better to uh, curb this whole thing, is because of the way E3 is as a press-only thing, I'd really like to have been able to, like, download a demo, like, get, be able to play the same demos they're playing on the floor. That would have been really nice. It would have, and I would love to be able to get my hands on Arkham Origins right now, because it's like, I'm seeing Batman going from, you know, just regularized Batman having what we had last game and then getting the improvements that you see like being going up against martial artists where it's like oh well you know you can counter them and now they can also counter you and it's the system's gotten a little bit more developed enveloped developed excuse me and then you know some of the uh gadgets that he's going to be having just it's like i wanna play <laughs> just take it it'll be over soon enough i know mr small <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you had that one, you had that reference, and then you had the uh, the screw up with uh, Battlefield Four, and then you had the PlayStation Four screw up where they were trying to play Assassin's Creed, and it just locked up, and then they just said, "Well, screw it, we're gonna move on to Watch Dogs now." <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, one of the other highlights of this whole thing is that we know now that. Um, uh, Dice is going to be working on um, Star Wars uh, Battlefront Battlefield uh, Battlefront Three. Um, now, the only thing that this kind of puts a bit of dread in me is the idea that they take it too seriously, like they try to make a Star Wars Battlefield game. Because I hope they don't do that. Because the way I felt about the Battlefield games is they were celebrations of Star Wars. They put in as many things as they could, as silly as they were, like the ability to just spawn in as a Jedi and start murdering people. And those things were just, like I said, a celebration of Star Wars. Like, just have as much fun as possible in a Star Wars setting. Now, I actually, I, on that note, I would like to see a more serious mode. Like, I would like to, them to have both as a possibility. If anything, just for ta if they decide, I, I don't want to see a story, but if they do a story, try and get it right, people. <laughs> Star Wars is a difficult. I I, I, th I just think Star Wars is a difficult property to write for because we've seen them get the story wrong so many times now, and it's probably completely due to the extended universe. But um. Anyway, that has been the gaming booth. I have been Cyberspace Individual Ginzaki. Um, wrap us out, Snoop Eddie Ed. And now uh, this is a story all about how the gaming booth is going to get turned upside down. I'd like a ticket moment. Just sit right there. I'm going to freaking go out and I'm going to put my underwear on my head.